Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Redmi K20 Pro, also known as Raphael and Raphael N. Now today we are talking about a ROM that is Project Awaken 2.0, unofficial, based on Android 12. And I'm glad that I've been a part of testing this ROM. The guy who develops this ROM or developed this ROM or ported this ROM, whatever you want to call it, is in my elite testers group and he's a good friend. So I would recommend you guys to give it a try. It is still in the early stages, almost everything works, but Wait for the complete video and you will get your answer whether you should flash it or not. But before we get into the details, if you haven't already and you enjoy watching custom ROM stuff, you should really consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really, really motivates us. And if you think you like chatting with different people who have similar devices and you like discussing custom ROM stuff, well, definitely you should join us on Telegram because we have more than a thousand like-minded people. You can join us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. We are active there as well. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to PhoneOps. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so what do we have here? Project Awaken version 2.0 unofficial based on Android 12, updated on the 25th of October, 2021. Now you have the G apps version. You have the change log over here. I'm pretty sure. Oh, so it's an initial Android 12 build added back SE Linux info in about page, add simple RGB color balance transform, add support for app signature spoofing, enable two button navigation, LT plus icon, fixed custom audio policy, fix some permissions, introduce three finger swipe screenshot. So that is good. There you see it's working fine. Introduced wallpaper based system colors monet, introduced pixel prop utilities, reduce screenshot dismiss delay to two seconds. So that's the change log. Now the important things to consider over here is always make a NAND backup be safe, uses OSS vendor, arrow kernel and UDFPS implementation by Google. Flash latest Android 11 firmware for your region, China preferably, but cross flash at your own risk. Build contains G apps, so no need to flash, ignore the zip name. That's everything about this particular ROM. Now let's go ahead and have a look. It comes with a beautiful wallpaper, a very, very clean UI, big icons, and that is something which is either in your face or either something that you like. And that, for me, that is good because bold looks are really, really nice. To the left, you do have the Google feed, which is working smooth as butter. I've not had any problems with it. Sometimes there are stutter and I'm pretty sure with time those stutters will be fixed as well. Now, as you can see, it keeps updating and sometimes it does stutter. Although I've seen this device not stuttering even when it's updating. So maybe later that will be fixed. At the bottom, of course, you have the Google search bar. You have all the basic applications that you need with a custom ROM and you have this entire Android 12 UI and Android 12 interface working like a charm along with Monet UI. Now, if we talk about the launcher in particular, you do see that it comes with the Google Pixel launcher. You can you know, go ahead and give access to notification dots and stuff like that. And you do have some other customization in this particular launcher. Let's go to the launcher settings once again. You have at a glance, you have add app icons to home screen, swipe to access Google apps, suggestions, as you can see over here, you can enable or disable that. You can search your phone, allow home screen rotation, and you do have some developer options as well. Now, when you talk about the quick tiles, you do have a few over here, which does include your screen recording. You can record internal and external audio. So let's go ahead and do a sample screen recording, which will give, give us a clear answer as to what exactly is the performance. So the screen recording is on and I think, so it's not stuttering a lot, but there is, yeah, there is definitely lag when recording the screen and it's not great. And I'm pretty sure with the upcoming builds, he should be able to fix that as well. So you can use a third party recorder. I believe that should fix the problem for you, at least till the time the built in recorder starts working really, really well. So we were talking about the quick tiles over here. As you can see, you have screen cast and all the other options. And over here, you have your privacy access, enable or disable feature. You have extra dim and you have, oh, these are from, okay, right. So nothing over here is unusual. Everything is absolutely as expected. You have your power menu over here 
and then you have your settings shortcut as well now this rom does come with a very very basic camera application so you can go ahead and flash gcam and the app icon animations are really really smooth and they work just fine so no problems there now moving on you will notice that the calculator the keyboard all the google applications are following material u which is a really really good thing now let's actually go to settings over here and let's go to about real quick and let's go to android version as you can see if you tap over here you do have your android 12 easter egg which works absolutely fine this is an unofficial build Android version 12, October security patch. It comes with the perf kernel and SE Linux is permissive. So that is what is mentioned over here. And if you talk about the battery life, the battery life on this particular ROM has been really good. The idle drain is pretty decent, although I had one or two wake locks, but that might be a one-off thing. Let's talk about the charging speed. The charging speed even now needs some work because it's taking a long time to charge. It's taking one and a half to two hours on a 27 watt charger. So maybe one or two builds later, those small things should be fixed as well. Now, as far as the app drawer is concerned, you don't really have a lot of applications. This ROM boots really, really, you know, bare bones. And that is the reason the performance is pretty decent. And if you actually go to settings and you go to stuff like notifications, you have notification history, which is available in all Android 12 based ROMs these days. Under battery, you do have the thermal profiles with the 180 Hertz touch sampling rate. And I'm being told that this is a transparent UI. So I'm pretty sure in the next build, they will look into it and fix that as well. And if you talk about battery usage, the battery usage, as I said, is pretty decent. You do have your battery manager over here. And then under sound, you do have the direct sound enhancer with enable hi-fi working absolutely fine. And under display, as you can see over here, you have tap to wake, you have night light and all those features, and you do have your ambient display as well. Now, this is a device which comes with an OLED panel, so you should not have any issues with the ambient display at all. Now, under security, you do have fingerprint unlock, and this is very important for phones like these. So, if you click over here, now, one small bug that I've noticed, sometimes on AOD, the FOD doesn't work, but most of the time it works absolutely fine, as you can see, and the animation is just beautiful. You do have your dedicated privacy menu over here, so you can go ahead and make changes there to get information, everything that you want to know about privacy, right? And as you can see over here, under gestures, you do have the three finger screenshot and all the other options. So all in all, Awaken OS 2.0 is a good start with the Android 12 base. And in a few builds, they will be daily driver ready. You can try it as a daily driver even now. It is not a bad ROM by any means, but it's just that all Android 12 ROMs right now are in early stages. So just expect some bugs here and there till the time the developers, you know, work their way to make things perfect for you guys. Now let's talk about the benchmark numbers. And the first thing that we're going to look at is the CPU throttle test. Now, as you can see over here, average score 179, 425 GIPS and the CPU throttle to 92% of its max performance, which is really, really good. Now let's go ahead and talk about Geekbench because we don't have N22. It did not run on this particular ROM. 730 single core, 2488 multi-core. So the battery backup is good. Everything else is decent. And let's have a look at safety net. I know it doesn't pass. Yes. So that should be fixed in the next build and Widevine L1 is working fine. So some things that needs to be worked on even now and the team is working really well. So hopefully very soon you will have a very stable ROM or a lot of stable ROMs based on Android 12 for the K20 Pro and these the other two devices as well. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video and this particular ROM. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.